Okay, so now our Pi is booted. Uh, we want to open up a terminal here. Uh, then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the uh, Raspberry config utility. Uh, this is a graphic interface that lets us uh, change different options on the Pi. In our case, we want to go to Advanced Options. Uh, then we want to go to SPI, and we want to enable it. Then we want to do the same thing again, except with I2C, and we want to enable it as well. Uh, you, they may already be enabled on your Pi if you've been using them before. When you go to finish, it might ask you to reboot. If it does, make sure that you do reboot. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to um, uh, update the package list. What this does is it updates the lists of where uh, the Pi is going to get its software from. We want to make sure this is up to date just so that we're always using uh, the latest software. Um, sometimes the older stuff might not work um, with uh, you know, newer slush engine packages. So you're going to run this. Uh, I'm not going to run it right now. It just takes a while. Uh, and then we have to install uh, a few packages. Um, in this case, we want to install Python 3 pip. This is a, a Python installer utility. And we also want to install git. Um, and once we've done that, um, I already have them installed and they're all up to date, which is great. Uh, yours, you may, want, you may have to install them. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the SPI uh, dev library. And this is the one that lets us communicate with the slush engine. Uh, so we're going to do sudo and then pip-3.2. This is the version of Python that we're using. And we want to install SPI dev. Uh, and then this is going to grab um, all of the data for, for SPI dev, um, make sure it's up to date, and then uh, install it. So you can see that, I, again, I already had it installed, but yours is just going to run through, uh, get the packages um, from um, the PyPy guys, and then uh, install it. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to set up a quick to wire. That's what we're going to be using to communicate with the I2C bus, which is similar to SPI, um, but is used on different devices on the slush engine. Uh, so in this case, we want to git clone. So this is going to get files uh, from a repository. And it's going to clone it into quick to wire python uh, dash api so this is just a, a directory um, and it's going to copy all the files and it shouldn't take too too long once it's finished we're going to cd which is change directory um, into quick to wire so that directory will have popped up now uh, after we clone it um, so now we're inside if you want to see the files you can type ls and you can see that there's a bunch of uh, different files in there uh, license files, um, setup files, things like that. Uh, the one we want is the setup file. So we're going to sudo again, and we're going to do python3. Make sure you type with 3, um, just because we we are using uh, python3, and this stuff will not work with uh, python2. And then install. So what this is going to do is it's going to um, call this setup script here that you can see, and we're going to give it the um, uh, the argument install, which is going to tell it to install uh, quick to wire. Um, and if we run that, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to build all of the packages and it's going to install them. And so what you're going to see uh, is finished process dependencies for quick to wire API. Uh, so that means that everything is installed successfully. Um, so the next thing that we want to do now is we can actually install uh, the software for the slush engine. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change directory out of quick to wire because we don't need uh, to be in there anymore. And I'm just going to, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to remove uh, the old slush uh, directory that's in there. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go to git clone. Um, and you can get this uh, link from the guide if you can't uh, uh, read it on the screen. So again, this is going to clone it. Uh, it's not a very big software package, so it uh, clones quite quickly. <clears throat> the next thing we want to do uh, is we want to cd into this directory again, and then we're going to do the exact same thing once more that we did for the quick to wire library. We're going to do cdu python3. Um, we're going to call the setup script and pass uh, the argument install inside of it. So we're going to run that and it's going to go through. Um, and again, we're going to see down here that it's finished, uh, it's finished building. Uh, so right now I'm using uh, the development version. Uh, you may see a newer version number down here. Uh, so now we've actually successfully uh, installed all of the um, uh, software that's required uh, to run the uh, slush engine. Now, if you want, you can quickly test it before you shut the slush engine down. 
Um, and to do that, we're going to go up here. We're going to go to Menu, Programming, Python 3, Idle. And Idle is just a program that we can use um, to have a bit of a graphic interface with Python. You could also do that from the terminal uh, if you want by typing uh, Python 3. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up. And what you can see is you can see the same thing. Uh, so Python 3.4. Uh, and then here you also see that. So we are running the same version of uh, Python. So what we want to do is we want to import slush. And if that imports successfully, then you have successfully installed uh, all of um, the uh, libraries uh, and um, software that is required uh, to run in the slush engine. And now what you're going to do is you're going to uh, turn off the Pi, and we are going to um, configure the hardware, and then uh, we're going to come back here to now uh, we're going to come back here to uh, actually program and move the motor. The hardware setup is quite simple. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach a power supply. In this case, I've just found one from an old laptop charger. Again, anything from about uh, 36 to 9 volts, anywhere in there, is going to work. Um, I tested this ahead of time with a multimeter, and this is positive, uh, and this is negative. We want to make sure that we hook it up. Uh, right now, I have unplugged it. Um, so we're going to insert it the wires into the terminals, uh, tighten the terminals, and then that's the connection for the power. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect uh, our stepper motor. In this case we just have a, a small NEMA 17 stepper motor, um, and we're going to put all of the wires in there. Now you can see the configuration here um, follows uh, the phases here, which is A+, plus, A-, minus, B-, minus, B+. Plus. Um, and these colors relate to uh, the motors that we sell online. Um, other motors are often different, uh, so just watch out for that. Um, but again, if you hook them up incorrectly, you're not going to harm the stepper motor, it's just not going to run properly. Um, so we want to make sure that we tighten those so that they do not come um, undone. And then with our Raspberry Pi connected, um, we can turn on uh, the power bar and uh, we should see everything start to boot. You can see the red light turn on, the Raspberry Pi is booting on the side, um, but the stepper motor will not turn and it will not lock either. So right now it is just spinning freely. And that is how you configure the hardware. Okay, so now we've booted the Pi back up and um, we have uh, all of the hardware set up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open idle back up. Uh, you might remember this from before. Make sure you open the Python 3 version. Uh, it might take a second to start up. Okay, so like we did before, the first thing we want to do is we want to import slush. So this imports the slush engine's library. Uh, then the first thing we need to do is we need to define the board as uh, a variable or an object. Um, and uh, the reason for that is uh, that the board uh, has different things on it, like I.O. and uh, analog inputs and temperature sensors and things. And those need to be accessed differently than the motor. So in this case, let's call it B. You can call it anything. Equals slush dot S board. And then two brackets, uh, just closing. You don't have to pass anything into it. Um, so what you can see is I've already, if you see these warnings, uh, what you can see is that it's already uh, been configured. Um, so that's actually okay. It just means that I've already used the IO on this boot, which I have because I just tested it before, uh, before doing this video. Um, so then the next thing that I want to do um, is I want to uh, do M uh, for motor is going to be equal to um, slush dot motor and we're going to say we're going to do motor zero. Uh, and so now you can see motor connected on GPIO 24. So it tells you uh, what GPIO the motor is actually uh, hooked up to. Um, so now actually we're ready to move the motor. So in this case, let's start with um, motor dot move. Um, so you can see the different parameters that uh, come up. Uh, and any of those can be used. Let's move uh, negative 10,000 steps. So what you'll see is that it's actually a very small distance, and that's because we have uh, the maximum microstepping turned on, which is 128 microsteps per step. Uh, so it's very, very accurate. Uh, so the next thing we can do is we can do, um, let's see if it'll list the commands for us. Uh, we can do motor run. So what this will do is it'll run it at a constant speed. So you can see down here we have dir and we have speed. Uh, so we're going to run it uh, forwards, and we're going to run it at 200 uh, steps per second. So what you can see is the motor is actually now slowly rotating. Now let's go the other way. So 
So you can see the motor stopped and uh, turned around and started going in the different direction. Now what we'll try and do is we'll try and run it a lot faster. Uh, so let's change direction again, and let's instead run it a thousand steps a second and see if it does it. So now what you can see is that the motor is uh, moving quite fast. Um, and now um, we'll just run it at a very slow speed. So now you can barely see it moving. So those are some of the basic commands uh, that you can use uh, to move the motor. Uh, one of the other very interesting ones is m.go2. Uh, go In this case, let's go to zero. What it's gonna do is it's gonna unwind itself after all that spinning because it always remembers its position. Uh, and it's going to go back uh, to the zero position. So once it's figured unwinding itself, um, it now knows where home is all over again. Um, so if we go do m.get uh, position, uh, we're going to see that it, we're at zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run the motor shortly. And we'll let it run. And then what we'll do is we'll do m.go to zero. Sorry, I typed that wrong. M dot go. M, M dot go to uh, zero. So what it's going to do is quickly unwind itself and go back um, and stop. And if you notice, if we go to M dot get position, we're going to be back at zero all over again. So the motor always remembers where it is, which is one of the fantastic features uh, of the slush engine. Um, so if you want to learn more about how to use the slush engine and the different features like the I.O., the temperature sensors, uh, look at the number of different guides that we have. Um, I hope you have your slush engine started. If you don't have it started and running, uh, check the troubleshooting guide and it will show you uh, different things uh, that you may have done wrong.